So I, I, I got to know uh, Captain Toms while I actually, I, I didn't know him before I went to the academy and, and didn't know him through my academy experience. When I got into the submarine force, I had heard about him because he was the, the one and only senior African-American in the submarine force. And then uh, I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, and he was as well. And so I, I remember distinctly that when he was about to have his first change of command and to be the first African-American CEO, he sent me an invitation. And I was just tickled pink because I knew of him. It was going to be uh, at that base. Uh, unfortunately, I was a you know, lowly junior officer, so I wasn't able to go. But just the fact that he had invited me was really a big deal. And, and so then it turned out that, so I kind of followed him closely and, and how he was doing and how the ship was doing. And then uh, a couple of years later, I came back to the Naval Academy. And so I was a, a lieutenant and sort of the staff lieutenant, a company officer, as they're called. And so they, the academy, had invited him to come speak at um, one of the various events. And so I, and so I, I distinctly remember, and as, you know, as a young lieutenant who thought the world should have revolved around me, I, um, I, I was. He talked to the mids, and then afterwards, he sort of stood around so folks could talk to him. And so I remember planning to go ask him some questions. Well, what do you do when you have, you know, these kind of challenges and, and there's something that's not fair in my life. And so, so I walked up to him and introduced myself. And then, uh, and I, you know, I sort of started this conversation about life is tough for me. And so before I got more than a sentence or two into it, because he knew exactly what I was going to say, he gave me that look like, you have no idea what it's really like. And so I remember, you know, the look, and it was the look of an older brother who wants you to do well. And so in, in his way, and he was a commanding officer, you know, just completed his tour, in his special way, he sort of said, listen, you, you know, you better toughen up and get going. And I remember that like it was yesterday. And I, I really think that part of the reason that I was able to achieve the things I was because I had someone like that who cared enough to not sugarcoat what I needed to be doing. And so from that point forward, we've, we've uh, maintained a, a really close relationship. W what does it mean to me when I see a, uh, a young African-American officer? Certainly first and foremost, I, I beam with pride because I know what they've gone through to get trained and to be where they are. And then I, I sort of sometimes think, with, with a little bit of reservation, because as I, as I count the number of the, the young African-Americans, there still are not enough. And so there was a small number of us, and, and it's been a few years since we've had a commander, another reach command. It's been too many years. And so, so I do try to put my arm around their shoulders and, and help them. I would say that there's still too many firsts and there's still too many one ofs. And so if there's anything that, that I continue to do to interact with the young guys and encourage them to stay with the submarine force,